Welcome to my channel, my name is Eniola and in today's video I will be going through a step-by-step -step explanation on how transformer neural networks work. So transformers are currently the state-of-the-art architectures for many natural language applications from language translation to question answering chatbots to even better search results and they also form the foundation of more sophisticated architectures like Google's BERT or OpenAI's GPT-3 and so it's very important that every machine learning engineer understands how they work and so if you'd like to do so please keep on watching. So to understand transformers it's important that we first understand what the attention mechanism is. Say for example, I'm asked to translate this sentence, hello, my name is Eni and I am Nigerian, to this sentence, bonjour, je m'appelle Eni et je suis Nigerian. In my mind, while I was doing this translation, I had to pay special attention to each of the English words that was being translated into French. And neural networks also try to mimic this behavior and they do this using something known as attention. And this attention technique is primarily being used in sequence to sequence models to help the decoder component of the network focus on parts of the information that it's been given by the encoder components of the network. And this helps it to make better predictions at every time step. But one problem with these sequence network is that due to their sequential nature, it becomes very hard to parallelize the sequence data when training these models on today's GPU computers. And this in turn makes training very, very slow. And so to deal with this inability to parallelize data, the authors of the attention is all you need paper came up with a new architecture that they call transformers. And this transformer still employs a encoder decoder structure like uh, sequence models but they do away completely with the recurrent or like sequential nature of these sequence networks and instead they process the information that they are being given solely using attention so how exactly do they work on a high level the transformer encoder would first convert this input sequence into a vector that represents all of the information it has learned about that sentence and then it passes this on to the decoder which then step by step converts this vector representation into the corresponding output translation. So breaking this down into more detailed steps. First, we pass the input sequence into a word embedding layer. A word embedding layer is simply a lookup table that holds learned numerical representation for words and this layer would select the numerical representation for each word in the sentence from its table and return these as its output. And seeing as the transformer doesn't have a sequential architecture anymore, the authors needed to find a way to let the network know the position and order of words in a sentence. And to do this, they used something called positional encodings to inject the information about the position of each word into its embedding representation. So for even positions, a sign function is used to create the positional representation and for odd positions, a cosine function is used. And these positional representations are then added to their corresponding embedding representation to create positional input embeddings. Next, these positional input embeddings are passed into the transformers encoder, which contains two submodels. The first is a multi-head attention model, followed by a fully connected feedforward network, with both having a residual connection followed by layer normalization around their outputs. Let's first take a look at the multi-head attention model. When using attention in regular sequence model, once the encoder is done processing the input sequence, it passes on this output to the decoder, which then tries to focus on which of the input representation vectors are most relevant to its current time step output. And to do this, it would create an attention query vector for that time step 
use the encoder outputs as its attention key and value vectors and then compute an attention score using these query key and value vectors and this type of attention is known as regular or vanilla attention while in the transformer encoder a slight variation of this vanilla attention is used and this is known as self attention which in this case it simply allows the encoder compute the relevancy of each word in the sentence to all the other words in the same sentence so this means that the query key and value vectors all come from the same sequence so when encoding the input sentence self-attention allows the decoder learn that the word student is most relevant to the word i to compute the self-attention the positional imputer burdens are fed into three distinct linear layers to create the encoder attention query key and value vectors next a dot multiplication is applied to the query and the transpose of the key to produce a scoring matrix and this scoring matrix is what determines the relevance of a word to other words in the matrix the higher the score the more relevant the word is the scoring matrix then gets scaled down by dividing by the square root of the dimension of the key vector and this is to allow for more stable gradients as multiplying these values several times can have exploding effects next these scores are passed into a softmax layer which returns probability values between 0 and 1 and finally this softmax attention scores are used to multiply the value vector to produce a weighted output vector so let's consider the following example james gave flowers to mary we see that the word gave has different meanings to different parts of the sentence james expresses who is doing the giving flowers expresses what's been given and mary expresses who the item was given to and so to account for the fact that a word can mean different things to different neighbors the transformer combines the outputs of several of these self-attention models and this is where the name multi-head attention comes from this combination is done by copying the query key and value matrices h number of times computing the self-attention operation over each copy concatenating each attention output together and then linearly transforming it into the expected dimensions once the multi-head attention computation is done a residual connection is added to its output which means that we simply add the input of the layer together with the output of the layer to allow gradients flow through the net directly without having to pass through nonlinear functions and layer normalization is then applied next which means that we just compute the mean and standard deviation of the output and use this to normalize the output values which help stabilize the network and help speed up training time this normalized residual output then gets fed into a fully connected feed forward network which consists of two linear layers a relu activation in between and is then residually connected and normalized and that pretty much wraps up all of the operations that take place in the transformer encoder layer and then this encoder can be stacked up n times to further encode the inputs and thereby improve the predictive power of the network once the encoding phase is done the output is passed to the decoder whose job is to generate text sequences and also has a similar sub layer structure to the encoder which are two multi-head attention layers and a feed forward layer with residual connection and layer normalization after each sub layer and just like with the encoder inputs at each time step the decoder inputs are embedded added to their positional encodings transformed into the decoder attention query key and value vectors and then fed into the first multi-head attention layer this multi-head attention layer also does self-attention like we mentioned in the encoder layer by computing the attention scores for the decoder inputs but it does this with a slight twist 
since the decoder is autoregressive, meaning that it generates the output word by word, it shouldn't be allowed to compute the attention scores on any future tokens. For example, when computing attention scores for the word SUI, the scoring matrix should not have access to the word ETUDIAN because this is a future word to be generated next. And instead, it should only have access to itself and the words before it. To achieve this, the attention scores are masked by adding a matrix of zeros and infinities to the scaled scores before softmax is applied. And so this masking helps to disable all the elements above the diagonal of the attention score matrix. And, and this is the only difference between the encoder and the decoder multi-head self-attention layers. All other steps, concatenation, linear transformation, residual connection, and layer normalization remain the same. The output of this mask multi-head attention is then passed on to the second multi-head attention layer to be used as its query vector, while the encoder output serves as the key value vectors allowing the decoder to attend to appropriate places in the input sequence. The final attention output vector is then passed to a fully connected feedforward network with residual connection and layer normalization and its output is then returned as the decoder output. And just like in the encoding layer, to boost its predictive power, the decoder can be stacked n layers high with the output of each decoder bubbled up to the top decoder before being fed into a final decoding linear layer which acts as a classifier with a soft max over the class vocabulary to return the predicted word. And this coding process is continued till a special end of sequence token is reached. And that pretty much sums up how transformers work. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and till next time, bye.